So it's 5 a.m. and I'm running and it's raining, or maybe I'm crying, but I can't really tell if the liquids on my face are tears or rain. And I usually come to practice in the morning half asleep. And last week when I got to morning practice, as I stepped out of my car, it slowly started to roll away, and I frantically yelled out that my car was broken. And he came over and put it in park. <laughs> now I'm sad to say that this is not an uncommon occurrence at morning practice. Did I mention that it's 5 a.m.? I've been running for as long as I can remember, whether it's in organized races, school fundraisers, or just around the house. I've found a home in the simplicity of the sport. And even though it's played a significant role throughout the majority of my life, I still sometimes ask myself why I choose to run. And that's a good question. It's called living life with one foot in the air. But what is living life with one foot in the air? Well, it's pretty simple. It's not standing. Instead, it's motion. Constant motion. Constant, forward, and determined motion. But first, a disclaimer. I'm 18, and although the government considers me an adult and I can now legally purchase a can of spray paint, I'm not so full of myself to say or think that I've found the secret to happiness. This talk is a summary of what I've come to know through my experience and how I choose to approach this life. So here's what I'm not going to talk to you about today. I'm not going to talk about Kanye West, except to say that when he tweeted, please do everything you possibly can in one lifetime, he was wrong. I'm not going to tell you a one-size-fits-all to happiness and fulfillment. And I'm not going to tell you that you must live life with one foot in the air. But I am going to tell you how. So this idea I'm telling you about is not about dedicating your life to checking items off of a bucket list. But it's also not about waiting for the perfect opportunities to fall out of the sky. The hard fact is that have the time to wait, whether it's for those perfect relationships, life-changing experiences, or ideal situations. There's a striking absence of perfection in this world, yet for one reason or another, many of us choose to dedicate our lives to capturing just that, and we will always fall disappointingly short. What if instead we choose to dedicate our lives to the search for our own limits? What happens when we constantly strive to know what we are capable of? Well, we'll also fail. We will fall short too. But this time, as we pick ourselves up and dust ourselves off, we are left with a continual hunger. And that hunger drives a determination within our hearts to discover ourselves and to pursue a life filled with passion. So, um, sorry. <laughs> Okay, sorry, okay, we're gonna switch feet for a second here, and we're gonna talk about a study that was conducted by Time Magazine. Um, so Time Magazine conducted this study regarding uh, 2016 New Year's resolutions, and here's what they found. Of everyone polled, the participants aged 65 and over answered with the highest frequency that their resolution was to enjoy life to its fullest. And why is that? Well, maybe it's because they're reaching the end of their lives and they don't feel like they've done enough, or maybe it's because retirement has given them more free time. But the thing is, these older generations have their priorities in the right order. And that same study showed that the younger generations don't. But the thing is, no matter how much time I think I have left, living life to the fullest should be my yearly, daily, even hourly resolution. And I don't know about you, but I really like the weekend. But if I only live for the weekend, I'm going to lose five-sevenths of my life. Instead, I should live like every Tuesday is a Saturday. So let's switch feet again and talk about butterflies. The average lifespan of butterflies is 5 to 14 days. Can you imagine trying to fit everything you've ever wanted or needed to do all to just 14 days? And yet sometimes it seems th that those butterflies experience more personal growth and transformation in that short period of time than many of us do in a lifetime. I could talk, they might tell us that their entire life has been nothing but constant change every day. But for us, it's different. We can get caught up in things, and suddenly a year can go by, and we haven't done anything to significantly change our lives like we'd resolved to do in January. So how does living in this way help us? Well, that Time Magazine study showed that the majority of us hope to live this life to the fullest because that was the number one New Year's resolution of 2016. But we all know too well that New Year's resolutions notoriously fail. And why is that? Well, Timothy Peichel can tell us. He's a professor of psychology at Carleton University 
And he says that New Year's resolutions require people to reinvent themselves, but many just aren't up to change their habits. They stay in place. They need this motion, this eyes on the prize, one foot constantly in the air motion. So now we're moving, but what are we moving towards? Well, Saint, sorry, po, or, um, Father Pedro Arupe calls us to be men and women for and with others. And he's a member of the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. And this call to be men and women for and with others um, uh, implies that we should live our lives for others. <laughs> sorry, I already said that. Um, but <laughs> um, because when we live our lives for others, our own needs fade away. So picture this, you've had a rough week, your workload is higher than it's been in months, you're late on that project that was due last Tuesday, you're experiencing stress in relationships, and you're two weeks behind on that TV show, and everyone's making references to it that you don't understand. <laughs> you're stressed, so you decide to go to that new movie that everyone's been raving about. You get your, your popcorn and your $10 bottled water, and you find your seat. Now, if you're really into that movie, those problems will temporarily fade away. And if you're really, really into that movie, you might even forget that you're sitting in a theater all together. You're completely engaged, and every trivial thing around you has to disappear. So what if we live our whole lives in a similar way? What if we live completely engaged in everything that we do? Well, the me disappears. The vanity, the self, the ego, it all seems to fade away, and we realize the importance of living for others. But we have to remember that this idea is called living with one foot in the air. So where is that other foot? Well, it's planted firmly on the ground. It gives us a sense of balance, a strong foundation, and a base to spring off of. So how do we achieve this balance? Well, a man named Jorge Bergoglio, more commonly known as Pope Francis, has turned this idea into an art form. Shortly before his ordination as a priest, he wrote down what he believed about himself and his place in the world in a paper known as a credo. By writing this short summary, Bergoglio grounded himself in his beliefs, but continued his life of forward movement. And every couple years, he takes out that paper to see what, how much or how little has changed. So grounded by his simple yet, yet profound belief system, he provided himself with the opportunity to recall his roots and remember where his journey began, but he also uses this paper as a proponent of his life of motion. He can live with one foot on the air and the other on the ground. So, now we're moving, but what are we moving towards? Well, uh, on the grounds of the Ignati Ignatius Jesuit Center in Guelph, Ontario, stands this statue. This is a quote I forgot to say earlier, but there are only two tragedies in life. One is not getting what one wants, and the other is getting it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, stands this statue of St. Ignatius, who founded the Jesuits. Now, most statues that you tend to see are of someone sitting or standing in place, but this statue is different. As you can see, St. Ignatius seems to be walking, moving against the wind. The Jesuits call themselves contemplatives in action, and they task themselves to praying with one foot in the air, both concretely by physically walking and moving while they pray, but also more abstractly. They use this phrase as a reminder to be in constant conversation and communion with God. At my Jesuit high school, I was challenged with the phrase, Aje quod Aje, which means to do well whatever you do. But don't take this phrase the wrong way. Doing well whatever you do does not mean that you have to be great at everything that you do. And if you're not, then there's no purpose. Instead, it means to delve deeply into the tasks at hand and to be completely engaged in So now that we've defined what living with one foot in the air looks like, motion, commitment, service, and engagement, we should talk about what holds us back from being able to live in those ways and how we can overcome them. There's a phenomenon plaguing society today that's being called FOMO, or the fear of missing out. FOMO, stem, or FOMO stems from a comparison of oneself to another. FOMO is when you're at home on a Friday night and you're scrolling through Snapchat and Instagram and you're seeing images of your friends getting ice cream and going to football games, and you feel like something's wrong with you because you're not doing those things too. This causes many to harshly critique their own lives and choices and to get down on themselves for not being happy 100% of the time. But the thing about living life with one foot in the air is that it is an extremely subjective process. What one person finds to give their life meaning and to devote themselves to may be drastically different than another's approach, but they can both be living with intention and driven purpose. 
Like I said earlier, there is no one right way to go about this life. Now, there's a passage in the Gospel of Matthew that recalls the, trans oops, that recalls the transfiguration when Jesus and two um, prophets, Moses and Elijah, revealed themselves to three apostles atop a mountain. The apostles were so in awe and so humbled that they told God they desired to stay right there. And they even offered to set up camp, but God told them no. God told them that they had to continue on, and they wanted to keep both feet on the ground. But God told them that they to not be afraid of the uncertainty set out before them. In a couple months, I'll be leaving for college and starting a new life far from the one I've known for over 18 years. And although this absolutely terrifies me, I've come to accept that the only way for me to grow is through this constant motion. So, oh, and the fear of failure also holds us back from being able to live in these ways as well. Um, living life with one foot in the air entails a willingness to take risks because sometimes the most dangerous place for us to be is in our comfort zone. So there's a relatively unheard of ultra marathon held every year in the woods of Tennessee that's known as the Barkley Marathon. Uh, in order to successfully complete the race, participants must complete five 20-mile loops in various directions and various times of day. There are no trail markings, there are no aid stations, and they have to do it in under 60 hours. In the 30-year history of the race, only 14 people of over 1,000 has successfully completed the course. So why would so many people set out to accomplish a goal that, for the majority, is unrealistic? Well, it's because, as Lazarus Lake, co-founder and race director of the Barkley Marathons, says, you can't accomplish anything without the possibility of failure. If you live your life where everything that you know is familiar and safe, and you never venture to the world you've already come to know, no significant or fulfilling meaning can be made. Living with one foot in the air entails a willingness to be open to growth amidst uncharted territory. So, back to that question I mentioned earlier. Why do I run? Well, I run because it challenges me to discover what I am capable of on a daily basis. I run because my heart loves the feeling of setting itself on track towards a goal. And I run because when I do, I'm completely aware. I notice every detail, how my arms and legs feel, who I'm with, what my surroundings look like, what I'm thinking, everything. I'm present, committed, and So now it's 5 p.m., and yes, I'm running. As I round the final curve with 700 meters behind me and only 100 ahead, I steal a glance over my shoulder and I smile. Fully committed, completely engaged, one foot in the air, I'm right where I want to be. Thank you.